Hello again, everyone. Welcome to week three and happy Thanksgiving to all. I hope that last week you were able to grow in your faith life as we reflected on the many ways in which we shepherd others and are at the same time sheep following Christ, our good shepherd. I don't know about you, but for me, praying those words, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, really helped open my eyes to the many ways in which my parents, teachers, priests, and ultimately God himself have been so patient with me. I was reminded that even with our shortcomings, we are loved and forgiven by God, the creator of all things. Recognizing my own shortcomings gave me a greater appreciation for our leaders and helped me to pray for those who shepherd us. If you found this to be true during your prayer experience last week, please comment and share your story. I am really looking forward to talking about this week's topic. We'll be looking at St. Augustine's letter to Proba, where he talks about prayer. I'll hold my comments for later, so for now, we'll let St. Augustine speak for himself. Let us always desire the happy life from the Lord God and always pray for it. But for this very reason, we turn our mind to the task of prayer at appointed hours. Since that desire grows lukewarm, so to speak, from our involvement in other concerns and occupations, we remind ourselves through the words of prayer to focus our attention on the object of our desire. Therefore, as the Apostle says, let your petition become known before God. This should not be taken in the sense that they are, in fact, becoming known to God, who certainly knew them even before they were made, but that they are becoming known to us before God through submission and not before men through boasting. I want you to pause and ask yourself this question. Is there anything that you can give to God that he hasn't given to you? Think about it. You may offer up your words of prayer to him, but God has given you the air to breathe those words. You may offer up your money to charity, but God has given you the strength to earn that money. You may offer up your body in laboring for volunteering, but God has given you your body. You may offer up your very life for the sake of Christ, but who gave you that life to begin with? When we come together to offer that sacrificial meal of the Eucharist, the gifts of the bread and the wine are the fruit of the earth, which have been sunlit, watered, and nourished by God. And at the Eucharist, are we not simply offering to the Father, His Son, whom He sent to us? God has blessed us so abundantly that we are absolutely incapable of ever paying God back. Nothing we can offer as anything to God. So why do we pray? The primary goal of prayer is to be united with our God. As St. Augustine so famously said in his confessions, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Nothing can satisfy the desires of our hearts except for the love of God. And prayer in its many forms is a way of raising our hearts and minds to God drawing us ever closer to our true happiness. The secondary goal of prayer is to proclaim the desires of our hearts to God. Again, this adds nothing to God. God knows our desires perfectly well, but he wants us to know our desires perfectly well. So that by acknowledging our needs and desires, we realize how dependent we are on our God. The more we know our dependence on God, the better we know ourselves and what it means to be truly human. Certainly, these are days of great need and dependence. In these days, not only must we take into account the many gifts we have, but who has given them. Recognizing that the love of God has been bestowed on us, we can love others all the more. And if we are unable to go out and physically help someone, then we need to recognize that God has given us this time to pray for them. And so now is the time to offer up our prayers for those who are in great need, physically, mentally, spiritually. 
this week, let's do two things. First of all, pick one day to wake up early this week. And before your feet touch the floor beside your bed, take time to count at least 40 things that God has given you. It can be anything from your ability to walk to the fact that your house is heated. And you don't have to stop at 40. You can count as many of your blessings as time will permit. Secondly, whenever you encounter a need in your own life or in someone else's, pray, give us this day our daily bread. And as you pray these words, lift up your needs and the needs of all of those around you. Remember that nothing, literally nothing that we have or need does not come from our God. Stay audacious for the faith this week. Leave your thoughts and comments below. And I ask that you please pray for me. I'll be returning back to Buffalo this week, and I will keep you all in my prayers. St. Augustine, pray for us. Mm -hmm.